the shows that you should catch up on during the summer dead time. And that is because, you know, summer networks don't really put much into their, their summer schedules. Let's just be honest. This is the time where they throw some stuff at the wall, see if it sticks. If it doesn't, they just let it slide off into obscurity. Or just resort to reruns. Or just resort to a lot of reruns. And they do that, too. They do do a lot of that, too. Uh, and this is where we saw a lot of the reality shows first start popping up. And they're like, hey, we'll just run reality shows during the summer. Thankfully, we're kind of going away from the huge reality show trend, but it's still uh, there's still too many of them, if you ask me. But I just was scouring the streaming sites out there, and I uh, saw a couple of cool shows that you could go ahead and get into. Maybe you hadn't watched them. Maybe you watched a season or two, but lost you know connection a connection with it. So I'm going to give you a few. So um, let's start off with ones that you can find on you know Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, all of those above. And I'm going to start with some cartoons, because I love cartoons. Cartoons are good. If you don't like cartoons, you're stupid. Oh, what kind of, are we talking some Saturday morning cartoons here, Brian? Or are we talking some more uh, adult-oriented cartoons? A little bit of comedy, a little bit of comedy. So let's just start off the list. So my first one that I have on there for cartoons is The Clone Wars. And yeah, this was kind of on Cartoon Network. But it is not necessarily all for kids because there's tons of crazy, awesome action and and stormtroopers just get killed left and right in this show. So I really enjoyed it. It had its dark themes, but it also, you know, had the the good stuff. I thought it was a really good transition for the Star Wars universe between numbers two and three. It was actually the best part of the prequel series, if you ask me. Um, It was better than all three movies put together times five. So I disagree with you. The best part of the prequel movies was Battlefront 2. Okay, well, the video game, fine. Fine, all right, fine. I won't argue (laughs) that. Um, So you have Clone Wars. There's about six seasons out there, plenty of shows to catch up on, and they are all epic. They're all like a half hour long, and it feels like you're watching like the most epic movie every single time. So it's awesome. Check those out. Uh, Then we have Avengers, Earth, Mightiest Heroes. Avengers, everybody loves it. Uh, You look at what's happening with the movies. If you want to see a little bit more in depth with the Ultron, that is what Earth's Mightiest Heroes deals with. I believe most of season two, or parts of season one and season two, have a lot to do with Ultron and. and Which would help that movie. Yeah. Because it was kind of sparse on the, the lead well, up to Ultron. Yeah, Ultron is different. Uh, he's created differently, and you'll you'll see. Just watch it. It's very interesting. Um, they do go through a bunch of cool villains, but it does have pretty much the main cast that you see, plus Black Panther and Ant Man and Wasp uh, that you see in in the movie. So it's definitely worth watching. I enjoyed the show. I've actually watched it through twice. Now, not all like back to back, but like over the course of years. And I thought it was awesome. So check that out. Um, then there's the older show, Justice League from back in, I believe, 2001. Um, that is an awesome show. I love that show more than I love. I, I actually like Superman as a character in that show, whereas I don't like Superman anywhere else. So yes, you if, do. No, I don't. You like, you like them in Smallville. Uh, because he wasn't really Superman, and I've gone back and watched Smallville recently. It didn't hold up, man. Did you watch the early? Like, actually, I think it was probably like second to third season, probably the best period. But mm, well, yeah, so but but it, it was really good. Like and Justice League and Justice League Unlimited are up on Netflix, so check those both out. They're a lot of fun. You get to see a lot of heroes that yeah, you might not know about too much. And a lot of them that are coming to light more, like Green Arrows in, in, in the sh- uh, at least Unlimited a lot. And you don't really hear too much about them. Hawk Girl is a main character in the Justice League series. And she's about to get her own show on CW. So those are cool. So those are the more, I guess, more kid-oriented ones, but not, not a really kid-oriented. Then you have some other ones. I know Brendan's going to be... I had to put this on there. I enjoy it, but if I didn't put this on the list, Brendan would be mad at me. And that's Psychopaths. Uh, that is up on Netflix. It is a very that's interesting show. It has got two concept, seasons now. Very well written. Uh, you won't see the second season up on Netflix. You only see the first season up there. Yeah. But. I thought the second season's up there now. Oh, okay. Maybe, well, you might. maybe not. Maybe they took it down, or maybe it's only on some like Hulu. Actually, I think that might be where it is. I think I'm cool. going to watch so it. So, again, one of the streaming services. So, check that out. You'll enjoy it. Um, even if you're not a fan of anime, it's a pretty cool story. Uh, and it's worth watching. And then the last of these, um, there's plenty more that I could have said with different other ones, but I wanted to keep it relatively short list. But Death Note, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It is awesome. Brendan yeah. doesn't agree. Yeah, the, you Note. mean the 
the the anime, not necessarily the movies, although the movies, no, the movies were bad, but they're, they're not up on streaming as far as I know. But Death Note, the TV show, it's only 37 episodes long for the whole series. It does kind yes. of fall apart a little bit towards the end, but the the majority but keeps of that... you but it keeps you on on edge and wanting to see more for for so long it's yeah. like a giant chess game yeah so it is. a giant chess game that you actually want to watch because and it's actually a tv show that it's sort of like they were like okay let's sit down and let's weave an intricate story some of these especially animes it feels like they're just like okay so here's how we want to start it and then here's how we want to end it and let's just figure out our way to connect the dots yeah doesn't really have to make sense but let's just do it and then the ending usually makes no sense with what happened in the beginning so <laughs> you know they actually connect the dots it does turn out very well and it's thoroughly enjoyable so check that out if you haven't checked out death note before and so now let's get more over to uh, i guess i would i was going to say live action but i actually have another cartoon but i guess more well i'll just throw the cartoon over it's more adult oriented but archer is, i believe the first four seasons are up on netflix if you want just to have a good laughing good time Watch that. H. John Benjamin is one of my favorite voice actors of all time, and he does the voice of Archer. Uh, these are the guys who did Frisky Dingo, which nobody seems to know about, but was on um, Cartoon Network for a while. And it's just hilarious. It's one of the best shows out there. It's still on Spike, so check it out when you can. Um, but then on some of the more live action, I'm going to go with a couple that are Netflix originals, and then there's Daredevil. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's awesome. Amazing fight scenes. We do have a review up. Check that out. Marco Polo. I enjoyed that thoroughly. Not the greatest piece of TV out there, but if you haven't seen it, it's worth watching. Um, and we also have a review of that one. Uh, then a couple other ones. Arrow. They I believe they have the first two seasons up on there. There's a little bit of stuff where it's like, oh, I'm whiny. Oh, I'm CW. Okay. But then there's so many more moments of action and uh, just great storytelling. That makes you want to watch it. And it makes you make sense why there's going to be so many spinoffs because they did the show very, very well. It actually appeals to almost all audiences, men, women, children. Eh, keep your kids away from it, I guess. I don't, I don't know what type of parents you are. Brendan, would you let your four-year-old watch Arrow? No, probably not. But okay. maybe, maybe the, the 11, 12-year-old? Yeah, I guess yeah, it wouldn't be too bad for that. Yeah, yeah, right in that that that's the wheelhouse that you're in, um, and uh, but I enjoyed it so. But then you have a show like Vikings that uh, I believe three seasons are up on Amazon Prime. It's an awesome show, very that's cool historical. Not for little kids, but... Well, no, but I, well, like I said, most of these weren't Daredevil yeah. and Marco Polo are certainly not for little kids. Yeah, I know exactly. I mean, yeah, <laughs> so, those are more so than Vikings, but yeah, but Vikings is a very entertaining show. Uh, Ragnar Lothbrok. The guy who plays that character, I just, I don't know how he does it. Like, he's almost like, he acts like he's insane, but he's not insane, <laughs> you know? And not that he it, acts like he is, he just looks like he is half the time. It kind of, yeah, it, it kind of confuses mm -hmm. me of how I should feel about these characters. It's like, the kind of protagonists do so terrible things. Anti-hero is the best way of saying it, I, I would say. I, it... it it's like they'd be the hero as long as you hate the rest of humanity, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, it, It's weird, it, but it gives, I guess it's it, it's well done as a historical piece mm -hmm. of introducing you to their, their culture, their way of thinking. And it's like, yeah, it kind of challenges you on like, hey, well, you know, the, you kind of want to root for this guy in certain situations. And in other kind of situations, you're like, mm, you jerk. You know, he really did just do that yeah and so. this is supposed to be historical he would have did this to people mm -hmm. yeah. so that's good um to rattle off a couple more sons of anarchy excellent show all seven seasons i believe are both on prime and netflix uh dexter at least the first four seasons are amazing and then the one that you have to watch if you haven't watched it i don't know what's going on with you you've only had like 15 years to watch it and that's firefly it is a masterpiece 11 episode masterpiece it's it it baffles my mind how it hasn't how it didn't get picked up as a season 2 and then you, well, after you're done watching the first well the only 11 episodes go ahead and watch the movie serenity and you you'll just be like what happened what what yeah. what are they doing I, I Joss think Whedon the best theory I, I ever heard, heard for why that didn't continue. it was just too good it was too expensive. Yeah, maybe, but it was. It is a it pretty. Ex it, you can tell it's a pretty expensive. It was excellent TV show. Yeah, I want to say it was back in two thousand one is when that came out. It was amazing. Yeah. 
it was absolutely amazing so that's our list uh, so check it out those are the things to keep you going through this summer dead zone TV time. Uh, hit us up. Let us know any other ones we left, left off the list or is there any of these that you haven't watched that you're excited to go watch? Let us know. Comments down below, of course, at Orts My Face on Twitter. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us.